Friends, in the dark corners of Glasgow's High Court, a trial unfolded that would leave the nation shocked and disturbed. An unprecedented trial that sent shivers down the spines of all who listened. This was no ordinary case. It was a story of abduction, torture and murder, where the absence of a body only heightened the suspense. Little did the world know that the trial of Colin Coates and Philip Wade for the abduction, torture and murder of Linda Spence would go down in history. I want to start off by showing you a picture. Have a look at this. When you see this, what do you see? Yeah, I know, it's a man dressed as a clown or whatever you want to call it. But is it horrifying at the same time? Like it's kind of scary, right? As this is one of the most horrifying and disturbing cases ever presented at the High Court in Glasgow. The tale of Linda's harrowing ordeal unfolded like a nightmarish thriller, leaving the public captivated and horrified by the unimaginable cruelty inflicted upon her. Linda Spence, a talented and promising financial advisor, unfortunately found herself thrust into a world of terror and torment at the hand of her captors. Taken to an attic in the quiet town of West Kilbride in North Ayrshire, Linda's fate was sealed as she was bound to a chair with tape and her screams stifled by tape over her mouth. But the most haunting aspect was the glasses with tape top lenses that obscured her vision, leaving her helpless in the face of impending horror. The sadistic killers, Colin Coates and Philip Wade, unleashed their wrath upon Linda with an arsenal of tools designed to inflict maximum pain and suffering. An iron, a golf club, cigarettes and bolt cutters became instruments of torment in their twisted world. Blindfolded and terrified, Linda endured agonizing days filled with unimaginable brutality and pain. But Coates and Wade were not satisfied with inflicting physical pain alone. They sought to break Linda's spirit and extract crucial information from her. You see, the events took a surprising turn when in a big move, Coates used Linda's own mobile and email to deceive her family and friends, creating a facade of normality amidst the unspeakable horrors inflicted upon her. To further ensure Linda's captivity, the ruthless killers enlisted the help of two small-time criminals, David Parker and Paul Smith, who both looked like a bunch of wankers. These hired guards were tasked with watching over Linda during the torturous interludes, and each moment Linda spent in their presence only intensified her fear, as she realized the depths of darkness she had been plunged into, not knowing if freedom was ever written in her fate again. Linda's desperate struggle for survival continued, with Coates and Wade fixated on uncovering the whereabouts of money they believed she owed in a fraudulent land deal. And that's the twist in the story. They believed she was committing fraud. Coates, driven by a sense of betrayal and an insatiable thirst for revenge, was convinced that Linda held key to his lost fortune. The true extent of Linda's knowledge remained a mystery of these missing funds. But one thing was certain, she would never live to tell her side of the story. It was on April the 28th, 2011, that Linda's tortured existence reached its tragic conclusion. Coates, consumed by his desire for retribution, is believed to have extinguished her life before callously disposing of her body, leaving no trace behind. As the days turned into weeks, Linda's concerned parents, Patricia and Jim, grew increasingly worried and reported her missing on May the 13th. In agitation to this, anguished pleas were made to the public for any information that could shed light on her disappearance. Colin Coates swiftly became the prime suspect and investigators placed him under constant surveillance. But the walls of silence seemed impenetrable as witnesses were paralyzed by fear, unwilling to come forward and provide crucial testimony. But in a surprising twist of tale, the breakthrough in the case came on August the 16th when Coates' actions pushed one witness to the brink of terror forcing the witness to seek protection from the police. With this pivotal information in hand, the authorities took decisive action on October the 28th, 2011, 
storming the West Kilbride flat that had become Linda's chamber of nightmares and quite possibly the end of her life. Among the remnants of her suffering, investigators discovered a chilling trace of Linda's blood on the bathroom floor, a grim reminder of the horrors she had to endure. Coates' fingerprint on the door handle further implicated him in this heinous crime. When mobile phone evidence firmly placed both Coates and Wade at the scene of Linda's prolonged torment, the trial that followed in April 2013 was unprecedented. Let's get one thing straight. They abducted her, they tortured her, but they didn't do it over some kind of financial gain or revenge or whatever you want to call it. They did it because they're just dirty bastards. You know, if you get off on abducting a woman and torturing a woman, that's nothing to do with money. That's all to do with some kind of fantasy you have in your head. The trial began for abduction, torture and murder. But what was most peculiar, probably the most fascinating part of this trial, was that it was with the presence of no body. And from my research, even to this day, the body has never been found. As the witnesses took the stand, the true horror of Linda Spencer's ordeal came to light. The testimony of David Parker and Paul Smith, who had chosen to cooperate with the prosecution in exchange for reduced sentences, provided a damning account of Linda's harrowing fate. Their words painted a vivid picture of Linda's torture and murder, leaving the jury on the edge of their seats as true extent of the depravity inflicted upon Linda unfolded before their eyes. Each revelation struck like a thunderclap, exposing a side of Linda that few had ever known. The courtroom was introduced to a different side of Linda. It was claimed that her life was a tapestry of deceit and fraud, woven with threats of ill-gotten wealth and a taste for the extravagant. Linda's fraudulent activities funded a lavish lifestyle filled with luxury and excess. Linda's scams, including the forgery of documents, had enabled her to accumulate substantial wealth. But this life of opulence and greed is what caught the attention of Colin Coates, a man who believed that she owed him a fortune. A deadly game of greed had been set in motion, or a game of being a dirty bastard. But there was more to Linda than met the eye. As the trial progressed, another shocking revelation emerged. Linda's involvement as an informant for the Scottish Crime and Drugs Enforcement Agency. This hidden aspect of her life had been kept from the murder squad detectives, potentially impeding their investigation and leaving Linda vulnerable to her captors. This revelation added a new layer of intrigue to an already perplexing case, casting doubt on the course of the investigation. As the trial reached its climax, the jury rendered their verdicts. A thunderous judgment that sealed the fate of Colin Coates and Philip Wade. Coates, considered the mastermind behind Linda's abduction, torture and murder, received a record minimum sentence of 33 years in prison. Wade, driven by his own greed, was sentenced to at least 30 years behind bars. The judge's words echoed through the courtroom, a chilling reminder that these men might never taste freedom ever again. The sentencing marked the end of a horrifying chapter, but the pain endured by Linda's parents, Patricia and Jim, was far from over. Outside the courtroom, Linda's parents stood shattered, their hearts broken by the loss of their beloved daughter. She had been a beacon of love and care snuffed out by unimaginable cruelty. Linda had been their world, a loving and caring girl who had fallen victim to unspeakable cruelty. Their grief knew no bounds, their pain immeasurable. The sentence brought them no solace, their world would forever be haunted by the memory of their precious Linda. But the story did not end there. In the years that followed, both Coates and Wade attempted to appeal their conviction and sentences. A bunch of cowards, huh? Grasping at any chance to escape the consequences of their heinous acts. However, their appeals were swiftly dismissed in July 2014, ensuring that they would face the consequences of their actions for the rest of their lives. The weight of their crimes would forever bear down upon them, a reminder of the darkness that dwelled within their souls. And as time pressed on, the search for Linda's remains continued. And recently, a renewed effort to bring closure to her grieving family was launched by the police. Forensic experts and specialists ventured into the remote lands of Auchenbreck, their every move cloaked 
in anticipation. The once thick woods had been cleared, opening the door to the truth that lay hidden beneath the earth, providing hope that the truth surrounding Linda's final resting place may finally be unveiled. It was a race against time, a quest to unearth the final piece of the puzzle. In the relentless pursuit of justice, Detective Superintendent Alan Buchanan led the charge to bring Linda's brutal murderers to justice. It was a case that would haunt him, not only for the heinous acts committed, but also for the one aspect that remained unsolved, the inability to locate Linda's body. A massive search was launched in a remote area, and Detective Buchanan and his team hoped to finally lay Linda to rest and bring some solace to her family. However, the search yielded no significant results, leaving them with a sense of disappointment. So let's have a look at this case. You got two dirty motherfuckers, right? And they learned that this woman who they were attracted to, for sure they were attracted to, had some kind of fraudulent cases or she had money or something or whatever. And they decided, you know what? We're going to try and take some of that money from her by torturing her and beating it out of her, right? That's how it was portrayed in the media. That's how the trial went. I disagree with most of that sentiment. I agree with the sentence, of course. I don't think they did it because they were after money. Maybe they thought, okay, well, you know, we'll torture her and then maybe we'll try and grease some pounds out of her. Fair enough. But the reason why they did it is because they were sick and demented. They wanted to torture this woman because they got high. They got off. They were turned on by the pain inflicting on this woman, by by being in control. Maybe for the first time in their lives, they are in control of a woman. You know what I mean? This was done for me, for me personally, this was done out of some kind of sexual gratification rather than, you know, just trying to chase some woman's money. I could be wrong, of course, but that's my inference. Anyway, comment. Tell me what you think.